recording it okay so i might go back and then discuss with you the same presentation again from the beginning so aging is a process which is inevitable for all of us we see some of our friends who age gracefully at the same time a few of our friends age painfully so if you ask me what is aging is all about i can say in a very wonderful quote age is all about mind over matter it doesn't matter as long as you don't mind so aging is a question of matter it's not a question of only mind how you are going to mind the things whenever you see certain people you see some japanese living for about 118 years you see on your whatsapp some uh, uh, photo saying that this fellow is 130 years so why do some people live longer it has been shown in scientific experiments that centenarians are those who seem to have genes that protect them from a whole host of illnesses centenarians means those people who are beyond the age of 100 and still continue to live it seems this is the scenario where genes are going to be protective for them if you look at their habits their habits are no often better than anyone else's so they have our same habits like us but fortunately they have genes that give them longevity by protecting them from many diseases so they have a genetic bias to live longer i keep saying nobody of us know none of us knows how long we are going to live but we all want our life to be happy and healthy as long as possible as long as we are living so nobody wants to even if you know that how long you are going to live it doesn't make any sense but as long as we are living we should be happy and healthy we are not fortunate <coughs> like certain centenarians to have the protective genes but at the same time if you want to age and age in a healthy way if you want to age in a healthy way you need to have a conscious plan you need to plan just like your education just like your in a career just your aging also has to be planned it is not a retirement planning please mind you it is the aging plan you need not retire you can continue to work but as you are aging we need to have a conscious plan <clears throat> so i am going to share with you <clears throat> i'm sorry many tips to help you to age well the first and foremost tip for aging well is a good exercise an exercise daily keeps your body and mind both very strong it improves your quality of life it prolongs your life it provides you a healthier heart it strengthens your bones it prevents cancer it aids you in better managing your weight it provides you a sound sleep it beats depression and anxiety so many benefits are there for doing a very good exercise so exercise helps you to age well you want to age gracefully and age well do exercise routinely so that you will be able to have a very strong body mind and a host of benefits are there if you are exercising and those benefits will get translated into a better aging it has been shown that people who sit endlessly on chairs are prone for diabetes heart problems and even cancers so you need to understand that for a good health you need to stand up it has been shown in certain scientific experiments recently that it is not necessary 
that you need to cycle or dance or playing football or doing going to the gym to do spend your energy so there are a lot of non exercise activity thermogenesis non exercise activity thermogenesis we all know this is what is called as need non exercise means for example you need to walk up to the you need to go to the market instead of taking your car or a cycle or a motorcycle you take a walk you want to climb up a couple of flights of stairs you take the stairs you want to walk along to the temple you take a walk rather than taking a car so non exercise activity thermogenesis is one of the important ways in which you will be able to preserve your heart and health so a very common question which is asked by my patients or my friends or acquaintances is how much exercise is needed and how long exercise is of two varieties one is an aerobic exercise the other is an anaerobic exercise aerobic exercise the commonest examples being uh, cycling walking jogging swimming so such type of exercise we need to do 30 minutes a day 5 days a week <coughs> is sufficient <coughs> for us to do well and this is what we do elderly people also we see they go for a walk and they say sir i am not still feeling well we need to understand that apart from this aerobic activity adults should engage in at least two sessions of strength training a week strength training means i will show you certain examples now what is strength training at the end of this exercise session so how to do a strength training exercise and that means 5 days of aerobic activities 2 days of strength training that means all the days you should do exercise and these two episodes of strength training should be separated by a intersession gap of about 48 hours and every session of exercise should have a warm up phase an intense physical activity phase and a cool down phase all these three phases are essential for you to do exercise properly so exercise where to exercise start wherever you can people commonly feel that i need to go to the park i need to go to the stadium i need to go to the playground i do not have enough space to do exercise i do not have enough time to do exercise but these are not important for us start exercise wherever you can in your office you can do last week i had the opportunity to meet a senior administrative service officer in new delhi so he was sharing with me an interesting experience every day whenever he has a 5 minute gap he goes into his attached bathroom and does 5 minutes of skipping he does 5 minutes of skipping so we need to understand that in his despite his very busy schedule administratively he could steal some time for himself every day 3 to 4 sessions of 5 minutes skipping helps him to stay fit so there is no barrier of space no barrier of time the only barrier is your attitude your mind is the barrier so start your exercise where you can perform the exercise and then sometimes people feel that okay if i have to do exercise dr raghu has just now told you need to do 30 minutes of exercise daily but i don't have 30 minutes i am so busy man so what i am going to suggest is even a modest exercise brings you lot of benefits so don't worry whether you are doing exercise once in a while or something start exercise somewhere and whatever possibility you have and if you are aged more than 45 years of age the role of a physiotherapist is very important because you start your exercise you end up with sore muscles only to stop your exercise so that is not the right way to do exercise so you should have a physiotherapist consultation and under the supervision of the physiotherapist till you acclimatize to this exercise you should start exercise so first start walking and then gradually you can walk faster and then graduate to running so you can gradually build your 
pace of the exercise, duration of the exercise, and place where you can do exercise. But for all this initial exercise, you need to have a good physiotherapist to help you to exercise properly so that you don't end up with a bad back. So this is one simple trip, a tip I am going to share. Another thing nowadays what we see is the interval training. It has been shown that instead of walking for 60 minutes or 75 minutes or 2 hours, if you do interval training, interval training means a 5 minute of rapid jogging followed by a walk, a 10 minutes of rapid cycling followed by a walk, a 10 minutes of rapid swimming then followed by the normal pace of swimming. So such a sort of interval training where you have aggressive bouts of exercise followed by the normal pace of exercise has been shown to be most beneficial in patients how to do an exercise. So interval training is one term which we need to get familiar as well as start practicing it. Exercise for one hour but out of this one hour dedicate five minutes for a rapid run. So that will help you to reap the maximum benefits of exercise. Now, how severe the exercise or how intense the exercise has to be. For normal people like you and me, moderate activity is safe and does plenty to improve your health. If you walk for about 30 minutes daily, it is not difficult. It gives you a lot of health benefits. Higher intensity exercise, for example, you start exercise and you start doing some bench press and push ups and all those things, such as those high intensity exercises raise your chances for muscle or joint injury. If you are doing exercise for health, stick to moderate activity. If you are going for a professional, this one, do a higher intensity activity. Because if you, a normal person like you and me, start doing a higher intensity activity, you end up with a sore muscle or a joint tear or a ligament tear. And sometimes, this is a very interesting statement. People feel, ah, oh, I got already angioplasty done, sir. If I walk, I might get a heart attack. So, we need to understand the risk of dying from vigorous exercise is much lower compared to the risk of a sedentary lifestyle. So if you stay idle, you have got a higher chance of dying rather than doing exercise. So please don't be under the false impression that exercise can bring you death or sometimes a lot of our friends, they say that one fellow is ex vigorously exercised and suddenly died. Sometimes the media channels also show that somebody is walking on the treadmill and died on the treadmill. So those are people who fall into the higher intensity activity without any appropriate supervision that cause death. For people like normally like you and me, be rest assured, you will not die from a vigorous exercise. Now, what are the common examples? How will you classify? I told you that you should do moderate intensity exercise. What is moderate intensity exercise means? You are breathing faster. You start to sweat more and you are able to talk but not able to sing. So this is what is the definition of moderate exercise. It could be any activity. It could be cycling. It could be uh, swimming. It could be jogging. It could be walking. And what you need to understand is the ability for a person to do exercise varies from person to person. It's an inter-individual difference will be there. So you need to understand that moderate exercise is the one where you start sweating more and where you start breathing faster and not able to sing but able to talk. So such sort of medium intensity, moderate intensity activity should be on this one. Vigorous means you are working very hard, breathing hard, sweating and finding the talking difficult. This is what is called as the vigorous exercise. So you should always do in this zone, for example, if you are going to do for a better health, not for professional exercise purposes. Here, I have given you a small chart how to increase gradually over a period of three months the duration of walking starting with 15 minutes and ending up with aiming up to 60 minutes a day. So gradually as you improve, if you walk for 60 minutes a day, it has got a host of health benefits which I have already shared. Now, 
as i have told you strength training is an important component of our exercise so strength training is i am showing you a, a five examples of the first part and five examples of the muscle stretch also so you got reps that means repetitions sets means a repetition means for example you take a um, chair stand this means this lady is standing on a is sitting on a stool and then stands up with this on to the sit stand sit stand sit stand and you see her chair hands are crossed on her chest so she is not taking support from her on her hands so she is sitting standing sitting standing and like this she does about 8 to 12 so 8 to 12 times sitting and standing makes one repetition or reps in short cut and 8 to 12 like that if she does about 3 times so 8 to 12 is equal to one set and like that she does between one to three sets so this exercise is a moderate exercise and you need to take about 30 to 90 seconds rest between two sets so sit stand sit stand sit stand like this 60 second gap and then again do like this so this is a chair standing with staggered you should have a sturdy chair or a sturdy stool sit stand sit stand sit stand and you should maintain neutral posture and you have to tighten the muscles in the abdomen and butt you have this my presentation which you can download keep it on your desktop and keep seeing that to understand what sort of exercise we can do with the, during the sitting posture uh, during this one the second strength training is wall push similarly 8 to 12 reps 1 to 3 sets 30 to 90 second gap stand away from the wall in front of the wall but away from it and with your arms extended at the shoulder line and then you you bend your arms and lower or upper body as far so you just pull back you push down pull back you push back go forward like this you have to bend your elbows lower your upper body like this closer to the wall keeping a straight line from heel to head heel to head you maintain a straight line pause then push away from the wall so from here you go here here to here here to push back push back push back so maintaining neutral all through this you maintain the straight line so your back is straight you push come back push come back like that 8 to 12 sets for about 3 times 8 to 12 reps for 3 sets is it too hard it is only moderate intensity activity you can take some steps you can move you might be closer to the wall in the initial weeks and go farther back 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 if you go farther away from the back it become from the wall it becomes a little more tough then the other strength exercise is curl up with one leg extended you will keep the one leg extended this leg is flexed or bent and then person lies flat and raises up the upper body so here in the upper abdomen and the lower abdomen muscles are getting tighten so you tighten your abdominal muscles and exhale as you lift and inhale as you go back exhale as you lift inhale as you come back so this is curl up with one leg extended then heel raise this is an exercise where you can do wherever you want this is also 8 to 12 reps is one set and like the 2 to 3 sets you can do this is a light to moderate exercise you have to stand up straight with your hands on the hips and then raise up the ball so you raise the heel gradually up supporting your entire body weight on the up forward part of the foot raise up come back raise up come back always maintain a neutral position as you lift up keep the ankles firm so that you can see the taut muscles here so this is how you can do the heel raise then you can do one more that is standing with side leg lift you you may stand up raise the foot like up till here come back raise come back raise come back so you slowly raise your right leg straight out of the side pause and then lower the leg raise lower raise lower like that and all through this you have to maintain a neutral position 
you have to tighten your abdominal muscles, squeeze your buttocks, and supporting the leg. And as you lift the leg, you have to exhale. As you bring back the leg, you have to inhale. In case if you find it difficult, you can take the support of a chair for a balance and you don't need to raise your leg up till this, but you can raise to a certain extent also is going to help. And once you have raised, if you feel this is not a very major exercise, you can do about, count about four numbers and come back. So for each rep you can do. Then this is the relaxation exercise. Relaxation exercise is what we called as the child pose. You flex your knees. Flex your hip, flex your upper body, extend your hand, upper limbs and then try to touch the floor with your head. So this is how and as you go back, you have to pull back your button towards your hip, sorry, buttock towards your hip. You pull back the buttock and push forward the head. That is how what you call as the child pose with a diagonal reach. And this is a very light exercise. This is what we use for relaxation. Torso rotation, where you flex your knees and keep the entire upper body straight and you rotate the torso alternating between right to neutral and left to neutral like that. This is a torso rotation. And as you do this, the exercise of the lower abdominal muscles is going to be stretching. This is a light exercise and usually we do it for the relaxation phase. So also upper hip stretch is also is one other exercise where you keep the upper body straight and you pull up the thigh and you try to relax your shoulders and lift your right foot off the floor until you find, sorry, until you find tightness here. So you your upper body is relaxed, you try to pull back and then if this muscle and buttock are tight, taut end, then you bring back to straight position. Like that you can do the upper hip stretch. So also chest stretch also, you hold against something, move the body away to the left. So also you hold on the right and move the body away from the right. So like this you do four reps and one set is one relaxation exercise. This is also light exercise. Hamstring stretch is also a similar exercise where you stretch your hamstrings and do that. So what you need to do is, so whenever you do a physical activity, you have to do along with the aerobic activity, one, two, three, four, and five sorts of stretching activity or strength training activity. And you have to do this one, two, three, four, and five hamstring stretch is the fifth one. These five are the relaxation exercises this is what you do during the cool down phase. So this is how you need to train your exercise schedule. Don't think that exercise strength training is only for younger people. Strength training is very important for elderly people also. So <clears throat> these exercises and all are available for you. You can download the presentation. Our IT team members will be mailing you this presentation to your email address. So keep this as a quick reference. No need to spend money on an expensive gym trainer. Dr. Raghu is your trainer. You can get nicely trained by him by these exercises. So the next, question, next part is how to eat well for a long and healthy life. If you want to do exercise, you cannot do without a healthy diet. A healthy diet will make you feel better, skirt serious health issues and keep obesity under check. Eating well is an important key to living well and longer. So eat well to live longer. There was a book which was written, an interesting book written by Michael Pollan, which is a New York Times bestseller in defense of food, a simple guide to healthy eating. I recommend you all to buy this book. It is available on Amazon. You can buy this book. This is a very interesting book. So what he says in the book is eat food. Eat food. All of us need food. Eat food. But not too much. And mostly from plants. So Michael Pollan is an American and he advocates to eat plants. So he's a vegetarian in our Indian <laughs> jargon. So if it is from a plant, eat it. 
but if it is made in a plant don't eat so from a plant fruit vegetable you can eat it made in a plant chips mixture or um, biscuit these are the things which you should not eat i have showed you this plate every week after week after week after week so we need to understand once again healthy eating is good water intake tea coffee healthy oils limit your milk intake eat whole grains whole grain sorry like brown rice whole wheat bread whole grain pasta limit refined grains like white rice and white bread <coughs> so whole grains should be brown rice brown bread or whole grain bread healthy protein in the form of fish beans nuts egg white fruits you have to take plenty of fruits of all colors and use healthy oils like canola oil and olive oil the more veggies the greater the variety and the better potatoes and french fries please don't count them as vegetables <laughs> these are not vegetables please understand potatoes and french fries do not count them as vegetables so you should take multi colored vegetables lot of fruits if you see 40% of the plate is or let's say 35% of the plate is vegetables 15% is fruit 30% is protein another 20% is whole grain so this is how you need to spread your diet a healthy plate means you should take lot of water and some tea or coffee but with little or no sugar so every week you take this plate you keep this plate in front of your dining table that helps you to choose your diet more judiciously then how to choose your fat so there are two types of fat some are good fat some are bad fat bad fats it is better to know so that you can avoid them they are animal fat that means milk and milk products hydrogenated fats trans fats and deep fried chips good fats are olive oil canola oil flax seeds fish and walnuts good carbohydrates are whole grains like as we have discussed brown rice vegetables and fruits bad carbohydrates are white rice white sugar and maize choose your proteins rightly bad proteins are cured meat or smoked meat all the tangdi kebabs are all bad protein good proteins are vegetables beans nuts grains fish and skinless chicken what and how to eat well this is another thing you know what to eat but how to eat well you take more of vegetables and instead of a potato start using a cauliflower spice it up with pepper or lemon instead of salt experiment with new foods like broccoli cauliflower lettuce various varieties of brie beans fruits and vegetables make your own drink you make your own coke uh, sorry <laughs> make your own vegetable juice make your own fruit juice drink means not the coke or something like that you make your own vegetable juice snack healthy snack on fruits nuts and seeds keep them available don't keep chips available to you instead you keep fruits nuts and seeds so you know how to eat well now after listening to these two components of eating well and exercising well you now understand how you should consciously plan your aging you need to know what to eat how to eat when to eat where to do exercise how much to do exercise all these things are very important for you to live longer and live well so now i will show you so many colors these are greens these are oranges these are reds these are once again citrus these are all whole grains so you need to understand that 1 2 3 4 and 5 these are five groups 1 2 3 4 and 5 you should see that you get all these five colors in food daily if you consciously make an effort to, to add all the five colors daily then you i am sure you can plan your life much better and age successfully now even in vegetables also there are certain good vegetables 
they are some bad vegetables so the starchy vegetables are bad vegetables are white potato not the sweet potato white potato peas and corn these are the starchy vegetables good vegetables are beans beets cauliflower cucumber eggplant mushroom onion pepper radish green salad and tomato these are all the good vegetables these are all the starchy vegetables starchy vegetables are a strong no maintain a good weight you can maintain a good weight by eating plenty of fruits and vegetables avoid unhealthy fats cut down on cookies chips cakes crackers what you drink what what you drink don't drink alcohol too much don't drink too much of cola drinks learn mindful eating focus on what you are eating don't focus on something else and very very importantly don't starve yourself to reduce your weight to to maintain a good weight you have to eat well you have to plan what you eat then third important issue which confronts the elderly people is how to maintain the memory for the majority of us memory starts falling from the age 50 but we need to understand memory is essential for our life you must have some of us must have seen amir khan in gajni how lack of memory made so much of troubles for his life he was unable to carry out his day to day activities so also if you have lost your ability to do exercise you are feeling weak you do not know what to choose and how or how to eat at that point of time assume that you start losing your memory also you see how miserable the life becomes so <clears throat> maintaining memory is an important part of aging successfully so how to keep your brain fit you keep moving don't stay idle eat a heart healthy diet keep your blood pressure under control always keep learning something new get a good night's sleep good good sleep at night stay socially active stop smoking if you drink alcohol moderate it protect your brain from various injuries and toxins tips for a positive psychology so apart from memory you need to know how to keep yourself positive identify your core strengths then focus upon them say thank you enjoy everyday pleasures find flow in life be mindful learn self compassion if you are generous with yourself then you can be generous with others if you continue to punish yourself you can never be happy with the other people beyond all this life you should find the greater meaning and purpose of your life if you are able to identify what is the meaning of your life or the purpose of your life then always the life becomes positive for you so quick remedies for stress you can choose a calming focus keep calm and stay focused this is the slide which i have presented in my first webinar on stress and heart i am repeating it again so you should keep calm and stay focused just relax and let things go you should have, you should understand that minor mistakes you should ignore and that will help you to be to de-stress yourself successfully another thing which can happen to people in elderly age is handling grief unfortunately in the world none of us are permanent one of my our family members close friends classmates son daughter somebody might not be with us anymore in those circumstances you are forced to handle the grief so whenever you need to handle grief you need to understand fasting is not a way to handle grief grief is different from depression we need to distinguish grief from depression grief is a response to the external circumstances 
depression is a thing which happens innately so you need to understand and differentiate between grief and depression for you to handle grief you need to eat healthy don't starve you need to sleep well lack of sleep increases the grief you need to exercise daily and don't take risk risk means somebody is not more then don't resort to alcohol drinking don't resort to excess smoking so these are the risks which you should avoid don't make big decision if there is a grief always you should wait for at least 12 to 24 months to take a big decision don't do decisions in a haste in this moment of grief get the help you need you always should take support from your family members or your friends and always look for the help you need and be specific about what you need penultimately we discuss about the various ailments which can happen in elderly age we all know heart diseases are the leading cause of death all over the world in india also they are the leading cause of death the most common causes of heart disease in elderly people are heart attack heart failure and abnormal heart beat so these are the three heart problems which you see in elderly people your cardiologist will be able to help you to overcome these medical ailments but as a cardiologist who is giving you a webinar on aging successfully i will teach you on certain good tips to prevent heart disease sleep well maintain good diet do regular exercise stop smoking thus you can prevent heart disease simple tips no new tips but very powerful tips so these well known tips you should always practice to prevent heart disease we should also know that cancer is also the second most common problem affecting the elderly people causing death so you can prevent cancer by stopping smoking reducing your weight taking daily aspirin doing regular exercise maintaining mindful eating avoiding pollutants especially in your work area like radon asbestos like that. diabetes diabetes mellitus is another problem which can affect the elderly people you can avoid diabetes by sleeping well eating a proper diet exercising regularly by keeping your weight in check you can avoid or prevent diabetes fifth problem which we need to understand in elderly people is osteoporosis we all think bone is a thing is a structure which gives you strength no bone is a living tissue and is a constant is in a state of constant flux so bone is a repository is the storehouse for your calcium and various other minerals so it is a living tissue and is in a constant flux there is a process called as the remodeling of the bones which happens regularly we need to understand that women beyond menopause men in their late 50s start losing their bone so if you lose the bone the strength falls so you need to take preventive measures to prevent this bone loss if you see a healthy bone is lot of white and less of black whereas a weak bone or an osteoporotic bone is more of black and less of white so you should to maintain the whiteness or the calcium in the bone you need to take certain food items as you tell you and certain preventive measures we will discuss you in the next slide but we need to understand the osteoporosis is most commonly seen in the hip the sacrum and the lower vertebra so these are the bones which are prone for fracture because of a weak bone so that is what is called the osteoporosis you can prevent osteoporosis by taking a diet which is rich in calcium doing regular physical exercise stopping smoking and more importantly you need to undergo periodic screening to identify whether you have got osteoporosis or not then apart from losing memory the sixth part is if the loss of memory is more profound 
then you call it as dementia. But dementia, please understand it is not just loss of memory, but apart from loss of memory, there is confusion and changes in the personality. And there is a continuous reduction of the ability of the person to perform everyday activities. So dementia could be due to a neurological event, that means due to the nerves getting damaged, or due to a vascular event, that is the blood vessels getting damaged. So if the nerves get damaged, that is what we call as the Alzheimer's disease. If the blood vessels get damaged, then that is what we call as the vascular dementia. So there are certain medical conditions which can cause dementia. The most common things being high blood pressure, high blood sugar, depression and obesity, all of them can lead to dementia. Apart from these causes which are medical conditions, there could be certain reversible causes. Why they are important is because if a person is unable to remember something, has got a lot of mood changes and he is little confused, you should think of certain reversible causes of dementia such as toxins or drugs, B12 deficiency, normal pressure hydrocephalus, thyroid deficiency or rarely a subdural hematoma. All of them are eminently treatable. <coughs> so, <coughs> excuse me, if a person has developed recent onset dementia, it is imperative on the part of that person to exclude all these problems because your doctor might not know all these conditions. But as a patient, you are also equally responsible for your health, if not more. So, you need to know that there are certain common treatable conditions, especially which can affect the elderly people. So, if you look for them, they are eminently treatable and your dementia is reversible. That is why what we call as the reversible dementia. So, what are the things which you can do? You should stop smoking, do daily exercise, you do start doing brain stimulation activity and most importantly, you should avoid head injury. So, you should avoid falls, avoid injury to the head because if you get a head injury, you have a very high chances to develop a rapidly progressive dementia. I know one of my friend's father-in-law had a head injury. After that, he developed a very rapidly progressive dementia from which he could never recoup himself. So, you should always avoid injuries to the head by using protective headgear without which you have a risk of having dementia. Then, seventh disease which can affect the elderly people is cataract, the eyesight problem. You can get a macular degeneration, you can get a cataract, you can get a glaucoma, one can develop diabetic retinopathy. So these are all the diseases which can affect the eyesight. So you need to get an ophthalmic evaluation or an eye checkup periodically to prevent and get these problems treated. We all think vaccination is an important part for young born young children or newborns. But we need to understand vaccinations are also important for the elderly people. One needs to get, these are the common vaccinations, but the most hepatitis A, hepatitis B, herpes joster, these are the common vaccinations which we can give. And I have given you certain scenarios where you want, one needs to get vaccinated. But I need to tell you that these two vaccinations have to be given mandatorily as endorsed by the international organization like you need to get vaccinated every year against influenza and at least one dose of pneumococcal vaccine for all people who are beyond the age of 65 years and also in certain immunocompromised circumstances. So all people who are beyond the age of 65 years should get an influenza vaccine every year and at least once a pneumococcal vaccination done. Now, we need to keep your health in a good shape. That means you need to undergo periodic health checkup. So, one can do cancer screening in the form of breast cancer screening by doing a self examination, but it is not very far, uh, there is not much of enough evidence. But a clinician should do an annual breast examination every year for people who are beyond their age of 40 and women in their 20 
to 30 should have at least once every three years. Mammogram every two years for women who are beyond the age of 40 years and older. Breast MRI if you have got an increased risk of developing breast cancer. Then screening for cervical cancer, pelvic examination and pap smear, colorectal cancer by doing fecal occult blood, sigmoid or colonoscope and this you should begin beyond the age of 50 and continue till the age of 75 that is for colorectal cancer, fecal occult blood, sigmoidoscopy or colonoscopy starting at the age of 50 and continuing till the age of 75 is very important for us. Fecal occult blood can test as I already told you. Diabetes checking beyond the age of 45 years every 3 years possibly in India every year. Fasting blood glucose. Glycated hemoglobin is also another test which you need to do. And people who have got diabetes should get a day every year a foot examination to prevent the loss of feet. At prime hospitals we do check for the feet under the with the help of Dr. Gopi Chalam, our dedicated podiatrist. And hearing checks, hearing tests you should do every few years after the age of 65. Heart disease check, blood pressure measurement every one to two years. That means every year you should get your blood pressure check. And fasting lipid profile also every two years. CRP, ECG every three years. So these are the common tests to get, see whether your heart disease is there or not. Cancer check by the presence of prostate specific antigen. There is some controversy. Some experts agree, some disagree. Rectal examination. So also certain experts agree, some experts disagree. Skin examination for people not for an Indian continent but for the western people. It is very important. Bone densitometry every 2 to 3 years for women who are beyond the age of 65 and men who are beyond the age of 70. Bone density check is very important. Other checks being Thyroid stimulating hormone TSH, dental examination every 6 to 12 months, comprehensive eye examination every year <coughs> or certain tip checks which are needed for you to age successfully. So these are all the health related issues. But beyond this, you need to understand to stay healthy, you need to be precise on your legal aspects. So if you are getting elderly, you need to choose an appropriate healthcare provider ahead and notify them. For example, you are in a certain town, you need to identify in case if I get a heart problem, this is the hospital where I need to be taken for. In case if I develop cancer, I need to go to this cancer specialist or to this cancer hospital. So you need to identify an appropriate healthcare provider and also possibly at, let them know that in case if I, there is a problem, I am going to come as an emergency. So the team also will be prepared. They know your background history. If you are admitted in an unconscious state, they already know what you are going to do. You need to live well. You need to give living will. Living will means, for example, you need to identify who is your care, type, care provider, who is your hospital who is going to do well, who is going to be your cook, who is going to be identified notified immediately if you are unwell. So all those things are come under living will. Do not confuse it with the will but as you as long as your living will has to be important. Advanced directives. Advanced directives means nowadays hospitals put elderly people on ventilator for long. People who are unconscious with a very poor chances of recovery. You put them on ventilator on advanced therapies. Please be very clear. That whether you want to be on these advanced therapies or not, it is your life and you have got every right to preserve its dignity. So you should give advanced directives to the healthcare providers apart from a living will also whom to contact in emergency. So you need to identify your healthcare provider, provide them with a living will and provide them advanced directives so that they will not be confused at a scenario where you are unwell and unconscious. Plan for your health insurance. Your health insurance should be a long term health insurance. Don't change your health care insurance provider frequently. You should provide a long term health insurance. This insurance should cover items such as critical care, cancer, etc. 
you should identify the year at which the policy becomes active before you take the policy identify the year on which the policy will become active you should identify whether the pre existing disease is covered or not does your health insurance provide you a cover for disability what happens if you are bedridden are you going to get some allowance and what is the scope of the government sponsored schemes like arogyasri esa rgby whether are they are going to cover your illness so you need to take all these things even if you have got this you can take a long term health insurance because this will not cover many of the illnesses arogyasri will not cover all your illnesses so you need to have a long term health insurance so also nowadays in the ujjogasri or the government's protective employee scheme also will not cover all ailments so even though you have got a government sponsored scheme coverage it is imperative for you to take a long term health insurance and at the time when you take the policy you need to understand what is your co payment obligation that will help you to understand whether you should be prepared with 10% of the bill or 20% of the bill or 30% of the bill so that helps you to plan for your health expenses wisely you have to plan for the future that means you should make your home into a sanctuary which will prevent falls you have to adapt your home with bright lighting with wall wall um, railings and you should have railings in the bathroom to prevent you from falls you should consider once you are beyond a certain age whether do you need to go move out to a retirement community think ahead for assistance plan for emergency write advanced care directives these are all part of your job don't think that on that day one of your family members are going to take care of them you need to plan for the future you can prevent falls apart from these rails by doing some active measures by heel to toe walk so you walk on the heel on wind direction and walk on the toe in the other direction like that if you walk you will be able to balance your body more firmly so you can prevent fall you can stand on one leg and practice a single leg stance that will also help you to prevent the falls i am going to provide you a small home safety checklist keep a phone and lamp close to your bed lamps that turn on one touch are easy to manage a firm mattress mattress has to be firm because it will balance you when you rise from the bed don't take very soft and spring beds they are not good for you make sure that the bed is low enough that your feet can touch the ground when you are sitting on the edge the path to the door has to be clear and there should not be any furniture otherwise you will trip and fall if you use a cane or walker or walker keep it within your reach you reach in the bathroom always install night lights so that you are, you have some light when you walk into the bathroom install grab bars and non slip mats or adhesive safety strips in the bathtub or shower so the adhesive safety strips are available in india you should put there if you have trouble sitting down on a toilet insta- install an elevated seat with armrest if the floor is slippery when white when wet consider installing textured tiles to prevent falls if the tub height is a problem install a low threshold shower kitchen you should have items where you can easily reach them keep a sturdy step stool to reach items in the high cabinet entrances and hallways should have lights should be free of holes clutter repair any rotted or crumbling steps mats inside the door should lie flat and should have a non skid backing hallways should be well lit so these are the simple home safety checklist which you need to adopt so i am close to concluding this session for you for a one any person to age successfully you need to have a balanced diet a regular exercise you have to boost your energy as well as memory sleep well get health checks periodically have a legal planning and plan the environment at home
If you follow the simple seven steps and make it a habit, I am sure you can age successfully as well as gracefully and happily. I hope I have shared with you a number of tips to age successfully. And coming forward to the next month's topic, next month the presentation is once again going to be on the first Saturday that is between 11 a.m. to 12 noon Indian Standard Time and this time we are going to discuss about healthy eating for a healthy heart. A very interesting topic which all my patients ask me how to, what to eat, what not to eat for a healthy heart and a topic dear to my heart to my heart too. So let's look forward. I am also as excited as you are to know what is healthy eating for a healthy heart. I hope you enjoyed my session on aging successfully and I am open to certain questions. You please send me your email questions. I am going to answer them very nicely for you and if re required I will refer certain literature and come back to you so that we all age successfully and gracefully. I would conclude this topic once again giving the quote, age is all about mind over matter. It doesn't matter as long as you don't mind. So don't mind about the age. Age is something for certain other people to discuss. You and me should never think that we are aging. Age is never in our mind. So it is one which is not in our mind will never come to our body. Let's age successfully. Happy weekend. Thank you.